Amen. But because of God's grace. The Bible says, in that box we were yet inside of sin. Christ commended his love towards us. That's the unmerited favor of God. That he bestowed upon each and every individual. Unrighteous. Un unrighteous. The word of God says he reigns. I thank God for his grace today upon my life. Upon your life. Amen. Glory to God. I recognize the note, amen, that we are indeed not our own. Amen. But God has sold, shaped us, pulled us, amen. The Bible says, formed us from the earth, amen, created us in his own image. Amen. In so much, amen, that he bred his breath of life in us. And the Bible says that man became a living soul. Amen. Amen. So man was able to think for himself. Amen. Living in this present realm, in this earthly realm, in this dimension. Amen. God, amen, uses us. God, amen, created us. Amen. That he would have joy, he would have pleasure, he would have delight inside of us, his creation. But he all know, amen, that, that sin had caused a separation away from God. Particularly the sin of disobedience. And the Bible says that man was put out of the line. Amen. From this point on, amen, there was, there was a disconnection. And God always wanted a connection between him and his prize creation, which is mine. Amen. And so, so, so as he began to go throughout the various chapters, the various, amen, bless the name of God, scriptures, books in the Bible. The Bible starts to tell us, amen, that, that God, amen, particularly chose Moses to lead his people. And we know I'm not going to go through the whole event of Moses, but after they came out of Egypt, amen, glory to God, God instructed Moses to build a tabernacle. And the tabernacle was used, amen, amen, that, that the people can, can come to a place, amen, to, 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 to know about their God, to learn about their God. It was also used as a place where the high priest, yes, amen, he, he, he offered up sacrifices for the sins of the people. And we know that this was called the atonement. You know that only the high priest was able to go into this particular place that they call the most holy of holies. Yes, they know that there were three parts to it. The outer court, the inner court, and the most holy of holies. So when the priest would go in the presence of God, would, would come down and then when the sacrifice was offered, and he did his service inside of there, the Bible also tells us, amen, that, that the priest carried a bell around him, and he was tied with a rope. It was for a particular purpose. Because if he was not living righteously, he was not left in up of standard. He was only performing lip service, which you can't see. God sees and he knows everything. The Bible says he knows the inward thoughts of every man. And there is nothing that is hidden from God. Because the darkness is revealed to him as the known day son. So God knows everything. Don't try to hide nothing from God. That's all, man. So the instant that he went in and tried to play around with the offerings, and he wasn't righteous. Amen. That same instant he fell right there dead. Mm -hmm. And therefore nobody else was permitted to go in. 
So in order for them to retrieve him, yes, now we know why the rope was tied around him. Because when he had a bell stop tied in, and we lying on the ground, he was a dead man. So what they had to do is they had to pull him out. Pull him out. Retrieve the dead man body. And they themselves were not allowed to go in. So he, he considered his tabernacle to be like a temple. But now, we, we advance forward and we know quite well that Solomon built the temple. He prayed earnestly unto God. And then he spoke some things in the temple while he prayed. And he dedicated this house unto God, this temple unto God. And then the Bible tells us moving forward that Jehoshaphat, king, as well prayed in the temple. Even he recited some things that Solomon had already said in the temple back to God. So that means he reminded God, amen, of the covenant that he had formed with those who would enter the house of God or the temple of God. The definition of a temple is a building devoted to worship. It is regarded as a dwelling place, general meaning, a God or gods. A temple is a devoted, is a building devoted to worship, regarded as a dwelling place for God or God. So hence now, when he uses in the term that we know it to be today for every believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. We come to this conclusion now in the book of Ephesians. And if we look at the word very carefully, we know that the statement the apostles made is a foundation. It is a point that you build upon. And the foundation should always be the strongest point of the building. Because it has to maintain the upward structure of the building. It has to support the very weight of the building. So you need this statement in their, in their teaching, in their doctrine, saying that Jesus Christ is the firm foundation. No other man can lay any other foundation that will be able to stand on that day or against that day. And we're fortunate this day as a day of temptation, a day of trial, a day of testing. So, they themselves now, God had raised them and set them with the examples to the word. They, and also the prophets who prophesied before time, about these various things that would come. You know, not your time, the, the earthly tabernacle, even the one that Solomon had built, was destroyed. It was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, whom God had appointed for a particular time to be a dominant force over the world. What I mean to say is that Nebuchadnezzar at this particular point 
Amen. He influenced every corridor of the world. Amen. There was no city. Amen. No country, no state that was greater at this time than Babylon. So therefore he was able to influence everything in the world that existed. God raised up Nebuchadnezzar. One of the things that he did was that he, amen, went into the temple. He took up all of the valuable things that were there. Gold, the silver, the jewels, and so forth that were used in this priestly order. God permitted it to happen. Now as he progressed on in the word of God, he also starts to tell us that Jesus Christ himself is the chief cornerstone inside of this building. That means that that is the focal or the main point of the building. Everything else branches off from Jesus. Everything else branches off. Notice now, we still on the temple. Because we still talking about the building. And then he said further here, in whom all the building is hidden. Praying together, growing unto a holy temple in the Lord. That explains that he is the main point. So, what happens now is that when you, as believers, and furthermore, the unbelievers, I stress this point, become citizens. Of the kingdom, citizens of heaven, you receive a certain qualification. You receive a certain qualification that that allows you to become a citizen. And you ask them, what what, what is this qualification? This qualification is the Holy Ghost. Because now he says that he gives you his what? Spirit. Remember Jesus Christ, amen, started to say, if I go not, the comfort will not come. And when the comforter comes, he will teach you all things and bring all things back to your remembrance. And we know quite well the events that occurred on the day of Pentecost. Particularly when they were in the upper room and, and, and the Holy Ghost descended. And it came in as a mighty rushing in. It descended upon their heads and it was seen as what? Cloven tongues of fire. So therefore now, Amen. He began to see God no longer living on the outside of man, but God now starting to dwell by His Spirit on the inside of man. So now, what that means is that 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 this connection that you have where you were disconnected, God reconnects you. Don't get fooled. I often tell people this by the word of God and it's locked up biblically. Man is made up of three parts. Yes, I agree so. Man is made up of three parts. Amen. You have the old with man. Yeah. You see me. Yeah. You have the breath of life. Okay. That's what God breathed into you so you could become a living creature. Amen. And then he gives you a soul that allows you to think. Everybody thinks independently. Everybody thinks 
different needs. The soul process, the thought process. That's where spirit and flesh connect. People start to talk about, oh, all of us got the spirit of God. Everybody got the spirit of God. No. No. The spirit of God don't allow you to do some things. That's true. But everybody got the breath of life. Amen. You need a body to function in this dimension, in this world. Amen. That's why it's called an earthly power doctor. Because it's made of this earth. And the Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. Now something else we got to inherit there. Yeah. That's why when you're dead, I go earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Thus, virtue come from, and virtue will not return. You will return right back to that thing that you walk on sometimes. Amen. That's all you is. You ain't nothing but dirt. Dirt. That's true. So knowing this now, God breathed into you. And you now are able to live in this dimension. So when God retracts his breath of life from you, what happens? You return back. That part of your body. That part that you see, amen, that part that you touch and you feel, and that turn back to death. Because God retracts his breath of life. Amen. And now you are judged based upon your actions, your thoughts, that you are carried out inside of the flesh. Okay. So now you, you, you are disconnected. So, so, so God gives you His Holy Ghost that we establish that now comes inside of you. That's what you receive. That was the act on the day of Pentecost. That's your passport. Yeah. That's your identification yeah. with Christ. Mm-hmm. We are all people here. But now, but now, what temple are you? Mm. What temple are you? The Bible puts it like this, servants you are to whom you yield yourself unto. You can say members if you want to. But he established the fact that God created each and every one of us that he can get Glory and praise of us. Amen. Amen. God wants to be life inside of us. Amen. Amen. And that's, that's why in the whole Testament, if we look to the Bible, the temple was set aside as a place that individuals can come and be taught, to come and be nurtured. In the righteousness of God. It was a place where history was taught. About what God had done. And God is still able to do. It was a very important place. That's why the Bible says God was in his holy because God is His Word, and His Word is supposed to be on this place. His Word is supposed to be taught in the Jesus. We see that, that individuals would go to them, and they would present now their children back on to God. Where did this occur? In the temple. So that means that this was a place that God is supposed to be reverent. Watch it out. Amen. Individuals should recognize. Amen. Who they are serving and the purpose that they are serving for. 
Now, when an individual receives the Holy Ghost, Amen. Amen. You, you, you are just a temple. And then God comes in and occupies that temple which is your body. The Bible tells us, Amen, that, that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. God. And him that defies his temple shall God destroy. Amen. So don't tell me you're in a temple. If the Bible says you're a temple, you are a temple. Amen. So that means then your body, amen, is designed, amen, and then we start to look at the meaning, amen, it is designed to give off worship. It is designed to give all praise. It is designed to give all thanksgiving. It is designed to host the spirit of the living God. Some people that 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 that, that when you are now inside of Christ you receive his spirit. You are a temple of the living God. Amen. It is a covenant relationship with God. I said it is a covenant relationship with God. It means then that if you do this, God will do that. Certain things in a covenant relationship, amen, glory to God, God comes through. For you. In a covenant relationship, it means part. There's more than one part in it. We say that there's a part A and there is a part B. So if you now present your body, the Bible says, as a living sacrifice 